since we were just learning about butterflies, I found this book and thought I might read it to you. It's called On Beyond Bugs, All About Insects. I'm the cat in the hat, and I'm glad that I found you. Right now, if you look, you'll see insects around you. They live in the water. The earth and the sky, just wait and you'll soon see an insect go by. There are millions of them. I will show some to you. Your mother will not mind at all if I do. Most insects you'll meet have hard shells and lay eggs. Praying mantis. You know this one. Butterfly. They have wings and can fly, and they all have six legs. Grasshopper. Ladybug. Black ant. Spiders aren't insects. This news couldn't wait. Instead of six legs, every spider has eight. So see that? Spiders are not considered insects. If you look at an insect up close, you will see that its body's in parts and each insect has three. First, the head then the thorax, and here at the end is the longest part, which is called the abdomen. So three body parts, head, thorax, and abdomen. Insects cannot see all the things that surround them, so they each have two feelers, to touch what's around them. We always call them antennas, but they're called feelers. An insect has feelers on top of its head. Some look a lot like a thin piece of thread, while others look more like feathers instead. We wish we had feelers, but we don't have any. You can also call feelers by this name, antennae. Watch an insect and see all the things that it does. Some can swim, a diving beetle, jump, a dog flea, or crawl, pipe vine caterpillar. Others chirp, cricket, flash, firefly, or buzz, bumblebee. Birds and frogs look for insects in order to eat them, so insects work hard to make sure they don't meet them. Some, like this wasp, have bright colors that say... Don't come near me. I'll sting you, so just stay away. This moth's wings are colored to look like the tree it is resting upon so that no one can see it. An underwing moth. That's called camouflage when an animal, a creature, an insect has coloring that matches where it's going to be hiding. This spittle bug sits and he spits out a bubble. It's wet and it's cool and can save him from trouble. For when he's all covered in bubbly foam, if a hungry bird comes, it thinks nobody's home.
He hides in his little spit bubbles. <laughs> Here is a riddle I learned from my mother. How's a skunk and a ladybug like one another? Hmm. When danger is near, it is easy to tell they suddenly give off a terrible smell. I didn't know that. Ladybugs give off a smell like how skunks do, and then other bugs will stay away from it. Hmm. These busy insects are my friends, the ants. They like to eat seeds, other insects, and plants. Ants are so strong, they can lift things that weigh over 10 times their weight, and they do it all day. So, if you were as strong as an ant, you would see you could lift up 10 cats in tall hats easily. That's a lot of cats. 10? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten. Watch these honeybees, and I'm sure you'll agree that these bees are as busy as busy can be. Worker bees collect food, and they keep the hive clean. They protect it from danger and wait on their queen. She must stay in one place. It is her job to lay dozens and dozens of eggs every day. When a bee has discovered where food can be found, she goes back to her friends and starts dancing around. First she wiggles, then waggles, in circles, and so all the other bees know which direction to go. We can grow lots of flowers with help from the bees. They store dust from each flower in back of their knees. See that? In back of their knees. This dust is called pollen. Next flower they find, when they land on it, they leave some pollen behind. This is called pollination, and it makes the new seeds that grow even more flowers, which everyone needs. Some insects I know can be unwanted guests. Fleas, flies, and mosquitoes can really be pests. Fleas live on cats, dogs, rats, hamsters, and mice. Their bite is quite itchy, which isn't too nice. But they're wonderful jumpers. Why, if we were fleas, we'd jump over a house, and we'd do it with ease. Have you ever wondered why does a fly buzz? Well, it beats its wings fast and each time that it does, its wings make a sound you can hear in your ear. And this sound lets you know there's a fly flying near. Here's a fact about flies that we both thought was icky they can walk upside down since their feet are so sticky. <laughs> I don't think mosquitoes are very polite. When they're hungry, they land and they sting when they bite. But it's only the female mosquitoes that do. Male mosquitoes will never come bothering you. Caterpillars do something you might think is strange. They start out as one thing, then one day they change. Some spin a small house on a branch just like this. And this home that they make is called a chrysalis. 
If you watch it, you'll see when a few weeks go by, it turns into a beautiful new butterfly. Here's a quick fact that we both thought was neat. Butterflies can taste their food with their feet. On warm summer evenings, you may see the light of fireflies flashing off on in the night. They are like tiny flashlights that float in the sky. And if you want to catch them, it's all right to try. Use a jar with a lid, watch them glimmer and glow. Then open the jar up and let them all go. All day and all night on the ground in the air, insects are moving around everywhere. It's important for us to keep learning about them. The world that we know couldn't go on without them. The butterfly, ladybug, ant, and the bee make everything better for you and for me. This is called a glossary at the back of a nonfiction book, a book that gives you real information, and it's a little like a dictionary. It will tell you what each word means. Ask your family to pause the video and they can read some of these words and what they mean. They are good science words. And this is a list of other books in case you were interested in reading more about insects. I don't think the libraries are open right now, but perhaps you can go on Google and find out more information about insects. I'd like to go back to the page about the body parts of the insect. So let me flip to that. Here we go. I think it could be fun if you made your own picture of an imaginary insect, but make sure it has all the parts of an insect. A head, but you design how will the head look. A thorax and an abdomen part. Remember that insects have um, six legs and they have the feelers, but you make a colorful imaginary insect and give it an interesting name. Will your insect fly? Will it eat nectar? Will it be one that stings us and buzzes around and bothers us? How colorful will your insect be? Draw your own insect picture and label it like a scientist does. And maybe your family can take a picture of it and email it to me and I can see the imaginary insect that you have created. Have a terrific day.